In this Home Theater Builder Series video, I'm talking about video source components and why I think a streamer plus a kaleidoscape is the perfect one-two punch for most builds. Just a preface, I've used or tinkered with just about every single source device you can imagine in my years of home theater. That means TiVos, disc players, game consoles, home theater PCs, local media streamers, internet streamers of every variety, and yes, Kaleidoscape. In my theater space right now, I've reduced my video consumption down to two devices. One, a latest model Apple TV 4K and a Kaleidoscape, currently using just a Strato S 6 terabyte model. I feel these devices give me the ultimate combination of access to a ton of content in the fewest possible devices, but each having their own virtues and strengths. Two other important points up front. One, I gave up on cable TV a while back. I no longer wanted the subscription, the special boxes. TiVo really blew it actually in the marketplace and so on. I wanted cable content access, but not the cost and special local hardware that comes with it. So I cut the cord. I'm currently subscribed to DirecTV Stream and I consume that in my home zones on the Apple TV, consolidating that type of content into that single streamer device. I also tossed physical media out the door a good while back too. I did every type of ripping, DIY, local media serving you could imagine, trying to build the perfect DIY solution before I fully realized what kind of a waste of time dead end street that was for content. So I pulled the plug on all of that too. I did a lot of variations on it though, on that theme, pretty much everyone you could imagine, and at a really high level of tech, even going full cloud with the formerly unlimited Google G Suite service. I'm done though, done ripping, done spending time on that kind of dead end path of physical media itself. I spent all that time and money essentially trying to create my own Kaleidoscape before finally just buying the darn Kaleidoscape. Now I'm free. I'll talk more about DIY media in a future video and why from that firsthand experience I jettisoned it from my life and why I really wouldn't recommend it. Certainly that today no one should start down that kind of a road for content. If you're already doing it, you have the time, you like spending the time it's, and it's fun and working for you, then that's awesome. But there are some aspects of it that are really cool. In this video as well though, I'm not going to talk about gaming hardware. I'll save gaming for a dedicated video in the Builder series in the future because gaming involves a lot more. Suffice to say though, in my opinion, and since we're talking about video sources here, if you're using a game console for video and it's working for you, then that's fine too. But I take a dedicated streamer and something like a Kaleidoscape over a game console any day, especially in a theater where you want elements like integration, automation, focused use and presentation, and so on. Gaming consoles, in my opinion, are for gaming and they do great at that. Disc and streaming playback in a premium space for a gaming console though, is an afterthought of its use case. So devices then. One, a competent streamer. Wait, what? Streaming in a home theater room? Isn't that bad quality? Well, maybe streaming was pretty terrible in the longer ago past, but streaming quality has actually advanced quite a lot and is quite good now. In fact, I would comfortably say that most of you AV purists out there, myself included, would probably fail an A to B streaming to disc type test for video and audio in a properly executed and level matched experiment. Streaming bit rates are nipping at the heels of higher quality content delivery and Sony's new service is right up there with them streaming at 80 megabit per second. Providers are starting to stream music across the board in lossless spatial audio. So how long do you think it's really gonna be before bandwidth supports doing this for video too? So you need a competent streamer nowadays anyway, because so much great content is locked behind streaming service paywalls. Do you really wanna live without the exclusives on Disney Plus, Netflix, and others? So much of that stuff doesn't come out on disc, it isn't available on Kaleidoscape, and you can't get it anywhere else. You don't have a choice but to stream or just ignore it. And I don't know about you, but I'm too much of a Marvel and a Star Wars fan to do that, let alone all the other stuff that Netflix makes. So what streaming box you might choose can kind of be a wash decision or possibly driven more by what else you want out of the box beyond video access and performance. For me, I've made it pretty clear here on the channel that I'm an Apple device user. I have an iPhone, an iPad, an Apple Watch, AirPods, and so on. So it just makes absolute sense for me to use an Apple TV. And I feel this is honestly the most premium, best streaming box option of all of them regardless. It's powerful, streams in great bit rates if you source your content from Apple and iTunes, and it integrates perfectly with other Apple devices. Still, if you're an Android user, then maybe opt for an Nvidia Shield TV or some Google TV box. 
If you're more into Amazon services, then maybe Fire TV's for you. Or you can always go to really the main common denominator of them all, pick a Roku. You really can't go wrong, and all of these boxes offer a plethora of tech features like Atmos and HDR now. They all have whiz-bang remotes with neat features and special buttons. They all do some level generally of automation integration and so on. But again, Apple TV for me is the go-to, and I find that it generally offers the best quantity and quality of actual apps and content to, to watch. There's no DirecTV stream on the Shield, for example. So I keep an Apple TV 4K, always day one updated to the latest model in my theater, and of course the same device in my family room TV zone as well for consistency of use and operation between the two zones. Apple TV really is a dedicated home theater quality device. But we all know as good as it is, we're still talking streaming. And despite any future potential, right now there's better fuel for our spaces. For all the collectors and physical media lovers, that's great for you. Me though, I'm all digital in my life, as much and as wherever possible. And thus, enter Kaleidoscape. Kaleidoscape is the one and only platform for digital distribution of a massive array of movie content at quality levels that meet and can often exceed discs. You can say anything you want about the cost of entry, but that's all we have. The one option, and thank goodness at least that one company is out there seeing fit in this market to bring us what Kaleidoscape does. So I've been using Kaleidoscape in my theater space pretty much since I built it, and have been very active with them and in the Kaleidoscape community. Using Kaleidoscape brings me everything that I want to feed my premium theater space with newest releases available before disc, check. Massive library from every major movie studio and lots of niche ones too, check. High quality bit rates and digital distribution, check. Great hardware, excellent software, powerful automation capabilities, and an elegantly awesome simple UI, check. If you're spending 20K, 30K, 50K or more on your theater space, you really do need to give it a deep look. Price of entry is expensive, yes, but a Strato S6 terabyte is a complete Kaleidoscape system. You don't have to have your entire movie collection with them locally downloaded at your house all the time. Everything you buy stays available in your account and is re-downloadable later at your leisure. So if you want to get into Kaleidoscape in as much of a cost-managed way as possible, you have the Strato S 6 terabyte. If you want to go bigger, spend more, store more, serve multiple zones, and benefit from uber fast download times, then you have the Strato C and Terra servers of multiple sizes now available to choose from. It's actually very scalable in a pretty big range of costs, so you can choose what it is you want. That single Strato S 6 terabyte holds about 104K movies, and that's quite a lot to keep new releases ready to go, a good bit of favorites resident, and then cycle content as you need to. As a standalone player though, it does take about 45 minutes usually to download a movie, and I have 500 gigabit internet service. A Terra for comparison can download the same movie in about 10 to maybe 15 minutes. We stream plenty in our theater, but when we have the choice of playing content from Kaleidoscape, we will generally choose it. My Kaleidoscape library numbers something like over 1200 films now, but luckily I benefited from transferring in some rights a while back before Ultraviolet died, and along the way with a variety of disc to digital conversions before I got rid of my physical media. If you have a large disc collection and you're thinking about Kaleidoscape, note that disc to digital conversion for many titles is offered at pretty low costs, sometimes just dollars per film, and dealers and the community are out there to actually help you temporarily get a hold of the hardware needed to perform those conversions. The Kaleidoscape community is really great online. Enthusiastic content lovers all around from the owners forum to Facebook groups and Kaleidoscape themselves communicating regularly with us enthusiasts. So that's video sources, basically a streamer because nowadays it's essentially mandatory as well as for the future and a Kaleidoscape to drive high-end content material into a high-end space. If you're into discs, DIY and all that, more power to you and enjoy. I'll talk about my personal experience with this and why I migrated away from it in more detail in the future. So any questions, of course, let me know in the comments, and particularly if there are elements and such about Kaleidoscape that you'd like to hear more about on the channel. Thanks for watching, and please like and especially subscribe to help keep the channel growing. Thanks.